You know what? Give me five you perfect shaped L size hand. my last video we got apple season in germany if you also got free apples in this video you will learn how to build your own diy cheap good apple hydro press driven by a small air pump not by water and get a preview about a diy blender built up from an angle grinder angel grinder however it kills the apple you will see and in the next video i will show you how to recycle plastic with this one and now have fun with the video. What you basically need to build up the press is one spaghetti pot. You see with a lot of holes and the holes shouldn't be too sharp. On this pot they are really smooth, the edges of the holes. And you also need um, this part from an old bicycle tire. And you need these two printed parts, 3D printed parts. Some sealant tape the rubber one the flexible one and one glove this glove is out of natural um, rubber there are also other kinds outside the other one isn't too uh, stretchy and uh, if you don't get irritation go with the uh, real natural rubber so as first you start taking off some of the sealant tape, put it on the edge from the 3D printed part and uh, flex it a little bit before that it's not too thick and lay it around like this. putting your sealant tape around uh, the 3D printed part it should look like this and uh, one thing you should consider while doing it it should be kind of going with the corner around and overlap a little bit to the inside uh, that you can later push it in with is in this uh, inner circle and have a good seal. The little tube part from the bicycle tire I glued in yesterday with CA glue. Uh, make sure you wait about 24 hours to dry, not like one minute or <laughs> even a few seconds like they promise you. Now, if you glue this deep, just wait a day. As next step, we take our 3D printed part with the sealant, we take our glove and we put it in. Just from the side, slide in a little bit, push the other edge over, push the other edge over, here. Yeah. And then you can align it a little bit, just go around and align like you think it's good. I would say it's good if it overlaps the holes, this going around the 12 holes and the screw going through. But I'm not sure if it's the best, it's just like I did the last one and it worked. So yeah, never change your running system, you know. Then you push over uh, these corners. Take another part, align the holes. If you need some help to align, just take something where you can uh, push through, then you go and align, then you push down. After you push it down, you take some screws and put them in. It's like uh, it's five millimeter and 25, yeah, 25 long. One thing I forget to tell you: before you screw on the top part, you have to countersink it. Because if you print it with countersinks, it would work, but they are not that pretty and uh, you have a better print if you do it afterwards. Yeah. 
you can take a uh, old school pot top. I don't know how you call it. I call it pot top for, uh, pot top for now. And drill a hole in the middle that you can fit in the part from before the inflatable part and screw it from top with a little nut. And uh, uh, the nut I got also from the bicycle tire. And you're ready to go. But only for a pressure at around one bar, uh, at one and a half, it's not good anymore for the old school normal uh, um, pot top. And if you want to go higher, I would recommend you uh, taking a 3mm stainless steel plate and same procedure. You take your pot top or in my case your stainless steel plate, the part from before, put it through the hole. And now I would recommend you, I did it before without, but I would recommend using a spring washer and then the nut, cause uh, under pressure the middle bends a little bit upwards and so there's a lot of pressure on the thin tube and uh, so just lay the spring washer on, put your nut on, slight turn, don't over tight that you still got the spring effect. So then you take your spaghetti pot, put it in, and what you now need is a clamping ring from a barrel. Um, they come in different sizes with uh, little adjusting screws. That's what I would recommend. I uh, welded the old one, but if you are not uh, sure, better stay safe and buy an uh, adjustable one. It's uh, easier and safer. So put it on, tuck, voila, ready to go. If you ask yourself why should I go with one bar of pressure and not higher, one reason would be these little vacuum, vacuum pumps, uh, really cheap, $12 or something like that. And yeah, you have inside of this little pump, little silicone rubbers, pushing the air and that's completely clean, free of any sealant, oil or something like that. So if you are not sure if this is completely tight and nothing is forever completely tight and don't want to have anything in the air what's leaking through, you can go with this kind of pump and one bar is for a little pot like this where the completely pressure comes as a downforce. Uh, a lot of pressure, one and a half should be more and better, uh, but uh, then you need to go with the other kind of pumps or maybe you find this type in stronger and uh, give it a try. Around our spaghetti pot, our press pot, I got three, three millimeter balls around uh, with headed nuts, flat screws uh, that it lines with the pot under it. Uh, you see it's self-centered and also three under it to lift it a little bit up so that the juice can flow like a river. And what we got underneath, just another pot. You can also take a pan or what you got and it got three legs. You will find them with the other 3D printed files and a hose adapter. You can put a hose on or just lay something under it. You have both options, so let it juice flow. Here we got the DIY blender. It got a bent knife as a blade. Works really good and it's cheap. It got a mesh on its throat. What you can fit in like this and decide how big the chunks that coming out. With apples they come more of a slime, but when we recycle plastic, maybe in the next video um, you will see uh, why we got the mesh. And now let's shred the apples.
like you see it take <laughs> just a second to destroy the whole apple and now I would say we kill the rest. <laughs> After you grinded all your apples, um, you can shake it around after you took it from the socket and push out the rest. Yeah, it's a little bit smeary. Uh, you can search for other apple grinders, they don't make that mess, but uh, yeah, it works perfectly fine. But better go outside. After you let fall everything on the floor. You keep on demonstrating that it's possible to make juice. Not drinkable anymore, but it worked just without pressure. The it's uh, start running the juice. Like you see, we put our grinded apples in a cotton bag. We will fold it over and put on some pressure. Now we will see how it performs under pressure, maybe worse like me or maybe really good like this cool press. And now we take it, put it a little bit together, put this thing on and let's see. Enjoy the pressing process, but before I show you the pump. Uh, like I told you before, here we got the 12 euro 12 volt pump. We need something like 1 or 2 amp um, power supply. And we need something like a T connection and a pressure meter. The pressure meter we got to see if it's leaking too much. Uh, we don't will come over 0 0.8 uh, bar on a larger volume. Uh, but it's plenty of pressure, but if you want to have more, like I told you, you can also use something like these uh, pumps. Um, they also got these pumps with 12 volt with, uh, uh, for, for your car and you can also put a power supply on it. Before we start the pressing, short safety advice, pressure can be dangerous, so put on some ear protection some glasses and a wooden sheet in front of it. I got some plexiglass here, but you can also take just a wood board, no problem. Then you don't see what's happening. But like I told you before, you can put a hose on and so you see if it's running or not. And your pump you can put in front that you see the pressure. And now let's go pump. After there's nearly no juice flowing anymore, just a little bit of dripping, you can cut off the power supply, cut off the pump and uh, wait until the pressure is going down nearly to zero. Uh, if you want, the process is finished, you can open up the release valve or you give it another push and look if there is still something inside. Like you see, another press is promising, but just do it if you want the 100% and I want them. When all apples now completely dead and no juice is flowing anymore and you can open up the release valve, you should put one between the line of the hose. I put it on the T-connection, drilled and tapped and put a little airbrush uh, one inside. You can also take its own T connection and another valve should be completely airtight, so yeah. You now see how it's deflating, the yellow rubber goes away from the hose and deflate completely. The pressure from the system is now completely released. We got around one and a half liter pure apple juice from around 2.2 kilos of apple. I would call that a number and now cheers. Oh no. 
there was the bottom bottom story. Yes. Let's see what we got underneath. Ooh, I'm impressed. Flo, you are not funny. <laughs> okay. Ooh, dry like the Sahara. Okay, maybe not completely, but I would say these apples are completely dead. And if you want to see more things dying in our dye bleeder blender, blender, you should uh, stay tuned. You know the whole stuff, like, subscribe, and so on. Bye, have a nice day, and build your own press. Ich weiß nicht mehr, worauf du hier wartest.